The left has managed to cure cognitive dissonance. Haven't you noticed? For the past year or so, leftists have been monolithically pushing for war. War with Russia, war with Syria, war with China. Who could have thought that the party with a long historical record for being anti-war could turn on a dime and suddenly become pit bulls for the military-industrial complex? Think back on that long history. You have the anti-war demonstrations of the 60s and the repeated chants of no blood for oil during the Bush presidencies. And speaking of no blood for oil, you have to admire how the left has gone from occupying Wall Street to being sycophants for Wall Street. Leftists used to accuse companies of working for the man, but these days, it no longer matters how big and powerful these multinational corporations have become. In fact, the more ruthless and exploitative these corporations are, the more lefty fanboys seek for their approval. As long as these big corporations post a black square or indicate they're for social justice, they're good in the eyes of the left. Even though many of these companies use labor from overseas, don't compensate their workers in the way leftists say people should be compensated, and many of them receive tax breaks through loopholes because they're friends with rich and powerful Democrats. Look at the Foxconn plant in China, where the current spate of anti-lockdown protests started. Foxconn provides chips for Apple, and Apple helps Beijing crush its detractors by disabling apps. And these same bleeding heart leftists love Apple and its products. The latest iPhone is almost a necessity for every blue-haired protester in America. That Apple is a literal oppressor never enters into the equation. Not a single leftist experiences a microsecond of cognitive dissonance over these extreme and abrupt changes in attitude. What's their secret? Very likely, it's being utterly devoid of principle or a cohesive worldview guided by traditional norms of what's morally right and wrong. Many followers of leftism can't explain the cognitive dissonance, so they just ignore it. Standard leftist stuff. You would think the Democrat politicians know what they're doing. Well, not all of them. Joe Biden comes across like he has one of those old-timey video game cartridge slots in place where his brain should be. When his handlers need a new narrative to advance their agenda, they just swap out the programming. That's exactly how the same people went from no war for oil to obey Big Pharma. The media does the same thing, operating in lockstep and pushing one narrative, even if it's completely contradictory to what they said previously. That's only one of their big medical achievements. The other one is arguably even more groundbreaking, if you can believe it. And that's the development of the universal cure, death. No, not the universal cure for death. What I'm saying is that the left has discovered death is the one treatment that can cure all conditions. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, that sounds like the opposite of medicine. After all, isn't medicine all about alleviating pain and suffering with the goal of restoring the patient to a normal, healthy life as much as possible? But that would be too reasonable. That's just your old-fashioned belief in morality talking. Death is really the new hotness that everyone's talking about. The left has a strange love for death. Look at Canada. Since instituting its Medical Assistance in Dying, or MAID law, in 2016, the number of Canadians who have taken the cure has increased annually from over 1,000 in 2016 to over 10,000 in 2021. MAID deaths now account for 3.3% of all deaths annually. Not once to sit on their laurels, the Canadian government in 2021 dropped the requirement that there be a RFND, or Reasonable Foreseeability of Natural Death, in order to get the procedure. That is no longer needed. The current list of requirements dictate that you have to be enduring suffering and be eligible for publicly funded health care services. That second requirement stands out to most people. If the ostensible goal is to alleviate that intolerable suffering, why do you have to be on government health care? That would seem to imply that it's not medical assistance, but the government that's killing its own people, which is the textbook definition for democide, the number one cause of all deaths in the prior century, thanks to communism. So popular and effective is the universal cure, and starting March 17th next year, Canadian patients will be able to use it to alleviate their psychological issues. It's clear that the longer this law remains in effect, the more people will be able to take advantage of it. There are even ads now promoting the practice. 
Recently, a fashion chain ran an ad on Canadian TV featuring a woman who the government put out of her misery the day before the ad aired. And no, it wasn't Balenciaga that made that ad. Canadian doctors have discovered that a dead patient is a quiet patient. And so far, no one who has taken the death cure has complained about it. I think ultimately the left's goal will be to continue expanding the availability for elective democide until you can use it for anything. Will 